Hey everybody, it's Emily. Welcome to another Grass River micro class. I'm outside the center on a beautiful sunny day and days like this, you might be walking in the woods and see some very strange black specks on the snow, almost like somebody shook a bunch of black pepper. So those are actually little organisms called snow fleas or springtails and we'll talk about how those organisms are classified, um, how they move, and what their lifestyle is like in this micro class. So snow fleas are really tiny, only about one to three millimeters in length. But if you look at them really closely, you'll be able to see that they do kind of resemble insects, but they're not actually classified as insects scientifically. So both insects and snow fleas are in the phylum Arthropoda, which includes all of our arthropods, like um, those two, but also crustaceans, spiders, ticks, and mites, um, and a few other things. Um, but instead of after the phylum being in the class Insecta, um, springtails and or snow fleas, those terms are kind of interchangeable, um, are in the class Entognatha and then the order Columbula under that. Um, and they actually are evolutionarily more closely related to crustaceans than they are to insects. But they do share a lot of characteristics with insects, like both of them have six legs, um, but the legs aren't structured exactly the same. Insects have these nice segmented legs, um, springtails, their legs are not structured in the same way. Um, and then they have simple eyes as opposed to the compound eyes of insects and their mouth parts are different too. Um, springtail mouth parts are on the inside of their mouth, which believe it or not is actually primitive um, evolutionarily. So um, insects actually have their mouth parts um, on the outside of their mouths. Um, and then springtails are all wingless as opposed to insects, many of which have wings. And so if they're so tiny and they don't have wings, you might be wondering how do they move? Okay, so how they move is where the name springtail comes from. So these organisms actually have a tail-like appendage called a furcula that is folded and curled under their body um, and it's attached to a segment of their thorax kind of clipped on there on a lip there um, and then when enough tension builds up then it springs loose it kind of flicks backward and launches the springtail into the air like a springboard and the springtail has doesn't it doesn't seem that they have any control over where they're going but the, these furcula can launch the springtails you know like three to four inches at least, which is many times their body length. So, I mean, I don't know what that equivalent of that would be for a human, but it's a large distance for a springtail and that's how they move around. So the fact that these animals are also called snow fleas might set off alarm bells in some of your brains, but don't worry, they are not parasitic in the way that the fleas that would infest your dog are. They're not related at all, actually. They just sort of look kind of like a flea um, and they jump like a flea. Um, so that's kind of where that common name came from. So there are two reasons though why you should really love snow fleas or springtails. The first of which is that they are really important um, decomposers in the environment. So they work like earthworms. They eat de decaying plant, bacteria, fungi, algae, um, and then they, they help to get that nutrient cycling, um, keep that nutrient cycling going. And so they live, as you might imagine, in areas that are very rich in organic matter, like they're really easy to see on um, some of Grass River's wooded trails. They love woods and places where there's lots of decaying plant matter. Um, the other reason why you should love them and why I think they're super cool is that they sort of like our wood frog friends that we talked about a couple weeks ago. They manufacture their own antifreeze in the winter and that's why you see them active in the winter when most other arthropods um, or invertebrates are definitely dormant during that time of year. Um, so they manufacture an amino acid called glycine that what it does is it binds to any ice crystals that are in the animal's blood or bodily fluids and prohibit that ice crystal from getting any bigger. And so that's how snow fleas are able to remain active even when the temperature is below freezing. Um, that antifreeze actually allows their bodily fluids to 
not freeze solid until they drop below 21 degrees Fahrenheit about, which is why you see them on mild, sunny winter days. And I should say they're active all year round, as you might expect, but the snow fleas, at least, the species of Columbula that we're talking about, they're dark colored. And so they really only show up well on light colored backgrounds like snow. But if you're an avid gardener, you've probably seen, it, but not realized it, thousands and thousands and thousands of springtails or snow fleas in your life because they love to live in that topsoil layer where there's lots of decaying organic material. Um, so next time you're out on a mild sunny day, see if you can spot some snow fleas um, on the surface of the snow. See if you can see them jumping around, flinging themselves with their furcula. All right, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.